this recording will be available an hour or two after class, uh, maybe a day after class. Um, and here, hold on, I'm going to spotlight. Okay, so we are going to start, we're going to draw this little panda today provided by Olga via Unsplash. Um, and uh, we're going to start with a pencil drawing. So that's going to be the beginning. And this is a pretty simple drawing. So I think we should be OK just uh, without a grid. Uh, what I'm going to do is walk you through the drawing and how to do it. And then um, I'm going to have you text your drawings over to me using the WhatsApp thread, which the link of which is in the chat. Uh, so if you want to join that, that's great. Then we can, and then you can see not only what I'm doing, but also what your classmates are doing. Let's see how well this looks today. So I'm going to start. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, let's see. Yep. Hang on just a second. So I'm starting... with the first lines that you're going to draw. <laughs> and for those of you who are beginners particularly, I'd recommend you follow these lines. Um, it's a little hard to see on the thread, but I'm gonna take a picture of this and send it across the WhatsApp thread so you can really see it. And I will of course do it too. Um, by the way, in some ways, this is my absolute favorite group because there are so many people from so many different locations. I really, I really love it. You're gonna want a pencil. This is a piece of watercolor paper. You can see I have it taped. It's taped off as eight by 10 inches. Um, I have it taped because I love how the paint, um, well, I'll show you at the end. This creates a nice little border that I don't have to use pencil for. And then basically, I'm just gonna start. Now these ears are bigger than you think they are. I can see that already. So be aware, I'm gonna start this drawing. I want you to take your time on the drawing and see how I'm kind of breaking this down. Also notice I'm kind of following the outline of some of the leaves on this section. So really, yeah. And then on this side, it's like, let's see, this comes up like that. This comes in. So really what I'm doing here more than anything else is following a little bit the outer shapes, but I'm also looking at negative spaces. And what is negative space? Negative space is the shape between the subject. So if the bamboo or the side of the bear, the bear is the subject that we're drawing, this shape between the bamboo and the bear's head that's background, that's the negative space. In drawing, we have to pay it. We're not used to thinking about the negative space. We're used to kind of ignoring it. But in drawing, we have to pay close attention to it. We have to pay uh, very close attention to it. Oh, and I'm just noticing this needs to come up a little bit. And you'll notice that even, um, even I am doing corrections as I go along. So correcting is not failure. Corrector, correction is actually success in, in uh, drawing terms. So go ahead and start with this outer shape. We start with the outer shapes. So we pay attention to negative space. We start with the outer shapes. We start with the outer shapes because if we start with the outer shapes, we tend to make things too big. So if I start with the outer shape, I know I'm gonna be able to make the inner shape thinner. Uh, I'm not sure what size paper you guys are using. This is an eight by 10 inch piece of paper, or uh, let's see, that would be, how many centimeters would that be? Hmm. I'll have to look, it would be eight by 10 inches. So it'd be 20 and a half by, 27 centimeters, okay. 
Uh, if you're drawing bigger or smaller, that's fine. Just be aware you kind of want your, um, your picture might be slightly different if you're using uh, different proportioned paper. Here, I'm gonna show you. So our next step, once we get the outer shapes uh, is to get the basic outlines of the inner shapes. We got a lot of leaves here, so I'm, I'm pulling those in as well. We're getting the uh, dark, medium, and light inner shapes. Now, please don't shade these. No coloring in. We're going to be doing, because that lead will mix with the paint, and we don't want to. We just want outlines here. And then... I'm going to give you a couple more measurements that might be helpful for you. Let's see. Actually, don't do the features yet. Get these other lines. We'll do the features together, but those, those will be secondary. Features are easy to get to. Messed up. We've got here. That's more like that. And this is all, this is the first like pass I'm taking at these, at this as well. I try not to practice my demos because I want you to really see how much correction is a part of the process, right? I want you to see that mistake making is actually totally valid as we're sketching things out. And I've been doing this now, I know it's hard to believe, uh, 20 years, 22 years, um, I've been drawing and painting uh, as a, prof you know, for the last 10 years, like professionally, really. Um, and uh, I still have to, I still make mistakes. I still have to, you know, I'm still, I want you to get that this is like, as we're doing this, Making mistakes is not bad. It's kind of like the only way you can figure out the layout is to get things um, in place. Notice that this bear is not looking towards us. So this side, and I was gonna draw this little shape so we saw it. So this is, this is the half, this is one half and this is the other. Because his face is turned away, notice that this side is almost twice this side, almost. If I want to draw a line down, the, down this center, but I'm not drawing a line down the center like this, the halfway point, like if this half was equal, right? I'm drawing this line a little bit to the left. Let's see. Uh-huh, not too bad. But go ahead and sketch in. So before you get any features, you can do these. But before you get any features, I want you to sketch in these leaves, the major leaves, as they interact with the face. And I'm going really fast, guys. So don't, the, those of you who are new at this, those of you who are Going slower, don't worry about that. I'm going fast so I can get this done and start looking at your work. A lot of watercolor is drawing, actually. That's the interesting thing about it. Olga, by the way, this is stinking adorable. <laughs> I'm kind of in love with it. I don't know if anybody else is feeling. Really... We were going to do the one of him chewing, but we thought his little teeth looked kind of forbidding. <laughs> right? This is a really great subject. Notice I'm only doing outlines. Okay, this is probably a good place to stop. I'm going to send a picture across the thread of where we're at of where I'm at, and then go ahead and try and get to here. And like I said, here's what's really interesting about watercolor. Watercolor actually doesn't take that, the, to actually paint in watercolor doesn't take that long. It's really the drawing that takes longer. 
So, uh, because we have to get our dark, medium, and our light shapes in. Oh boy, Diana, there's one part of this that's hard. I didn't really think about it's the eyes. There's tiny bits of white in here. We're gonna have to preserve. All right, well, we'll do what we can. So go ahead and send a picture across the thread of your sketch when it's kind of at this point or quicker, if you can get there quicker. And I will help you get the shapes right. If I'm correcting you, that doesn't mean that's not bad. That actually is good. <laughs> that, means you're, that means you're getting somewhere. That means you're pushing beyond your knowledge. So don't feel called out or you're sad about that. So watercolor, what's really fascinating about watercolor and why we start with subjects with a lot of white is that you're gonna start learning, let's see. Um, Olga, get your, let's see. I feel there's too much, um, the ear is too small on this side, honey. You mm -hmm. need to pull that up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Good, Emma. Great. You got it. Ha, that's coming along, Diana. Very nice. I like the purple in the background. You can darken it and make it deeper or bluer later, but right now I think that's going to play with your hair and the picture nicely. Diana's painting. By the way, you don't have to. Oh, Diana, you sent it to East Coast. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. You don't actually have to um, uh, do the assignment. You can totally come to class and just do your own thing, and I will help you with it. The assignments are designed to kind of help um, help with uh, help with um, skills, skill building. So if you're wanting help with skill bidding, you follow the assignment. If not, you can do your own thing. Did or, you, you know, freeze? Hmm? Did you freeze? I no. got it. Did I? No, you're back. Oh, did I freeze? Okay, don't think so. All right, there we go. Looking great. So Diana's working on a portrait of herself. Well, we'll see if, it, if it's myself, but... Technically, is my me, my dog, your and my dog, cat. and your cat. Okay, Anik, Anik, I want. I think this is a little bit. The panda bear's face is a little bit more. Um, it's not so round, right? It's more square, down, yeah. over, right? It's more blocky. It's look at it. He's almost like a yeah. diamond. Mm -hmm. All right. Annika. Mm. Looks. Annika, the, you have the face coming out a little too far on this side. Note how it lines up with the ear. This is mostly, so look at, this is the space. Yeah. Yes, you know. There we go. I like this because you can kind of see what everybody else is doing as well. It makes gives you this feeling of being in a class. Nina, let's see. Nina, this is Nina. Uh, ear is bigger, so this comes down more. Look at this. This comes down like that, right? This comes down like that. This panda bear's face is almost like a diamond. Or a, there will a little, be a spark. That's all right. <laughs> that works. That works. Works for me. Good. Good. Looks pretty good. 
Um, your chin, so Hannah, under here, see where I'm pointing here? Oops. Sorry, did I go away for a minute? <laughs> so Hannah, what I would say is the only thing is pull the chin in a little bit closer. You have um, this happening like that. See that? So you just wanna pull this in a little bit to line up with the edge of the ear. It's a little bit too wide on this side. Otherwise looks pretty good. Here's his little neck. There's the white part of the neck and the dark part of the neck. Down here are a few like kind of whitey spots, white spots in the dark. Good job, you guys, doing great. Uh, there is a beginning drawing class. Let's see, Eliza. Hey, see Eliza, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> Good job. Uh, this ear is a little bit too big. Bring it in down a little bit. Notice they line up with each other, right? But you got it. Needy, good. Uh, Rashmi, good. Rashmi, getting better and better as a drawer. Needy, needy, really good. Uh, just bring your ear out a little bit. You've got this happening and it's actually longer and comes kind of almost to the edge of the face. See how if I were to draw a straight line down, the edge of the ear would come there. So just make this a little bit thicker and then, then it'll match with this ear. Good job, you guys. You guys are doing great. All right, so here's the thing. We always start with white subjects when we're learning how to draw. Um, oh, good, good, Ani, looks great. We always start with white subjects when we're learning how to paint in watercolor. And the reason, <laughs> I've got some pastel dust on my, on my painting, oops, don't want that, um, is that uh, you're gonna start learning about light and shadow very well. In watercolor, we do not paint the white parts. We keep them blank. So it helps you identify in here, although this bear's face is all white, what areas are actually white? This area up here is white, right? This is white up here, but this white area down here because it's in shadow is more yellowy and more and a slightly darker. So we're gonna paint this area, but we are not gonna paint the lightest areas of the face. So it's very important to identify what those are. Um, because you're gonna need, right? You're gonna need them. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna need to uh, 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 keep these areas without any paint on them. So that's one of the reasons watercolor goes so fast. We leave our white areas just white. This is kind of a fun one. So once you've got this here, I'm just trying to see what are the what's the halfway point here. Hold on. Panda bears have weird features. I'm just gonna measure, right. So right here, right here is the halfway point of this line. So if you can see, if you can measure on your own, right? Find the halfway point of this line. You'll see that these little eye patches are partly above and partly below that line. That helps you to get them in the right places. Notice this eye patch is slightly bigger because this part of the face is closer to us. Let's see what else is halfway. So that's, this should be. All right, here's the next halfway point. It's kind of midway to the nose. So if I find here, this is the halfway point. This halfway point is here. So I know my nose comes up a little bit higher. Notice this part of the nose is bigger than this half. See how this half is kind of smaller and this half is bigger. So they're not equal in size. Welcome to the wonderful world of painting where nothing is what you think and drawing where nothing is what you think it should be. Okay. And then kind of right under here 
is that nose. And notice once again, the mouth, well, partly there's a, um, what do you call it? There's a bamboo leaf there that's covering that second half of the mouth. You've got the tongue. But notice that the mouth is kind of wider on this side than on the other side. So I use this line to kind of help me locate where things are. And there's a couple of other lines that are important. One is um, this line here, right? Which is where the shaded part, the shaded white part shows up. And down here, there's a tiny little area here that's dark. So I'm gonna want this space lined up and then this space sort of spelled out because these areas I'm gonna paint. Everything else, the white areas, I am not going to paint. So I wanna have those pretty clear. So everything down here I'm gonna paint. There's darks here. I know these areas are really dark. Don't um, don't color them in. We'll do that with paint. The eyes are going to be very tricky because it's mostly dark with just a little bit of white. So what I want you to do is give yourself a the, really what we're going to do here is darken everything but these little white spots. Here, I'll take a picture up close so you can see. You're gonna, we're gonna do the eyes last because that's gonna be the hardest part. These are looking good. So kind of here's where you're gonna be or some proximity of where you wanna be. All right. I could do better. See, even I am, and you might notice that when you take a picture and send it over, it'll be more obvious to you what's wrong with your, <laughs> how you need to correct your drawing, like I just did right there. And then, yeah. All right. Give me one second. I have to go catch, check and make sure my kitty has not escaped. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Everybody's a okay so far. So looking good. So go ahead and send these in. If you're having trouble, send it in. Don't feel shy about that. This is the, the send it across the thread. That's the way for me to see. And by the way, once you've joined this thread, you're gonna get every post that comes across it. So whether you're in class or not, <laughs> you're not gonna be, unless you quit the thread, <laughs> you're gonna see what people are doing. Um, I find that kind of charming. I mean, my, all day long, my phone is going off with artwork, which I just think is great. Uh, looks good, Anik, looks good, works for me. Emma, nice. Um, go ahead and expand your mouth out just a little bit wider here. Otherwise, that looks pretty good. Courtney, excellent. Are you sure you've never done this before? <laughs> Are you oh, this sure? This is first time. First time. This, this is awesome. Uh, the only thing I'd say, Courtney, is you can make this eye just a little bit bigger. If you can see, this one's kind of skinnier because it's turned away from us. So you can make that bigger. But this is great. Good job. You're gonna enjoy this. Kristen, are you sure you have it? <laughs> I 
don't know, Hannah. I think you've recruited a bunch of ringers. <laughs> this I'm is the delightful. Amateur. You're not an amateur. <laughs> You're a pro, young lady. <laughs> These are wonderful. Um, I know this feels a little bit uh, challenging. I know this is not exactly the easiest thing, but you guys are doing great. And one of the things I want to point out about this is that this feeling, and by the way, you can get rid of your line once you kind of get everything in the right place. You can get rid of any extra lines that aren't actually there. Um, I want to point something out. There's this kind of sweet spot of pushing yourself, having to concentrate just hard enough Right, so the task is a difficult enough that you really have to focus on what you're doing. Um, but it's, so it's not like, like the relaxation of art doesn't, isn't like lying on the beach relaxing. It's more like going to the gym, which is not exactly re relaxing in the moment, but is great afterwards. So if you're feeling a little bit of tension of like, oh, am I getting this right? Oh, is this hard? That's beautiful. That's the sweet spot. That's where you wanna be. And if you're feeling like, I don't know how to get past this, then you come to me because I will help you figure it out. Claudia, great. Great. Rashmi, great. Rashmi, I love seeing your um, uh, green cabinets. Behind. They're the exact same color as the bamboo. It's great. These are great. You guys are doing great. All right. We're going to wait another second. So for those of you who are um, new to this or getting ready, I haven't done watercolor before, uh, I'm going to move this out of the way. I, while everyone else is finishing their drawings, I'm going to introduce the materials we'll be using. This is my uh, little palette set. Um, color is where the WhatsApp thread becomes really important. Let's see, Nina. Hold on. Hannah, Hannah, this looks pretty good, but you want to bring this eye over here because remember this side of the face, this half of the face is smaller than this half. So move the, move your, move what is our left, what looks like our, the left eye on our, to us over here and keep this here. Okay. Nina, looking good. Looking good. Okay. So all of watercolor really is drawing. A lot of it is drawing. Um, so uh, I have, this is like a little, um, so I use tubed paint. You're gonna see why at some point during the class, I prefer it. However, what ends up happening with tubed paint, like this is tubed, so tubed paint meaning it's wet, right? It opens up, it kind of comes out wet like this. Here, I'll put a little bit more on like that. Um, I use tubed paint uh, because there are some, there's a little bit more flexibility with it. However, what will happen is after about 10 minutes, tubed paint will dry. So if you've got the pats that are dry, that's also totally okay. Um, and what I like to do with this little palette is keep my, keep, just keep replenishing my colors in the same places. Um, so. Uh, so, the, and I do that by actually labeling here on the back. This is ultramarine blue. This is phthalo blue. This is cerulean blue. So I know these when I come in and I add these in, I know what goes where. Um, so I like to continue. And then, and then when it's dry, you can just kind of fold it up and carry it with you. Um, there are a lot of different palettes. So I'm going to start by making sure I have a wet paper towel. I like to call this your security blankie. You're going to be. Oh, it has to be on. wet. What's oh, that? No, to clean, to clean. Sorry. Yeah, I'm cleaning up my cleaning up my palette. I'm cleaning this up because I'm going to be doing all my mixing here, and I don't think that the mixes I did last night in last night's class are going to help me. Well, they might actually, but I'm good. We're going to mix all over again. So I'm cleaning this up so I can mix. I'm going back in and I'm kind of brushing over the top with water to kind of, cause sometimes we do mixing, we do mixing with the brush. So sometimes we'll mix colors together, right? I can kind of clean this up so that I can see more of the palette. 
All right. And then I've got my colors. Let's see. Hold on. I see a couple of people have sent in drawings. Uh, Needy, this is not bad, um, but your eye up here is too high. Bring it down so it's lined up with this eye. It, it's bigger, but it comes down further. It doesn't go up higher. Annika. Annika, nose is wider. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sandra, looks pretty good to me. Good job, Sandra. Good proportion. Uh, mm -hmm. Sandra, bring in his face a little bit on this side. He's not quite so wide. Okay. See how he kind of comes up over and in. He will look less wolf-like wolf and more like a <laughs> bear, but good job. So cute. <laughs> good job. He really is cute. He's like totally cute. Um, and uh, one of the things we're going to learn about watercolor is that you, you start with, so anyway, I've got this. Now I'm going to add my, hold on, spotlights. You can see the rest of my setup here. All right. So here is I have water and I've got, I've got four brushes in here, but really I'm going to use two. Um, and I'm const I'll be constantly dipping in the water. So at points, I'm going to let you see that to see how often I'm dipping in the water. Hold on, move spotlight, go back. Let's talk about brushes for a second. I do most of my work with this half inch uh, brush. You can see it's got a very thin tip. Um, and then I do like, so I do 90% of my work with this. And then I, and then I do the last 10% with this little tiny skinny brush. So that's what I like to use. Um, you will pointy brushes. Well, anyway, some people really like pointy brushes. I shouldn't dish pointy brushes. I also will always have a piece of paper next to my painting where I can test. So the challenge with watercolor is that you can't go too dark because if you go too dark too quickly, so unlike acrylic and oil painting where your whole point is to go really dark on your base and then add your lights on top. Uh, with watercolor, we have to preserve our lights by not painting them and we have to build up our darks because if we go too dark, we can't go back. Um, so the only way to really manage that um, is to test everything, uh, every painting stroke. You mix your paints and then you come on here and you test with testing paper. So you can see, I like this brush. It does kind of skinny lines, it's thick lines, right? Um, I just for comparisons purposes, for those of you who have been working with me long enough, I mean, my favorite brush for working with acrylic and oil is this. And it has like this, look at how thick and wrangly and raggedy this is because oil and acrylic paint has to be pushed around to be able to create texture. Look, look at the difference between this. Look at their profiles, right? They're the skinny, this is the skinniest little thing. This is like totally fat. The reason that you want a kind of brush that gets, comes up to a thin point, right? Where you have more control. Here, I'll paint up here where there isn't a, where, which is beyond my border. If you look at this, here's the amazing thing about watercolor. Like uh, I lay it down and just the way the water interacts with the pigment, and the way um, it interacts with the texture of the paper, a lot of texture is created for me. So my job in watercolor is to control more, is to control the brush more, right? I don't need to do so much with the brush. You'll see less is more with watercolor, all the ways. So if you've got it uh, and you're just playing around, I would get your palette out. Uh, you're going to want a place to mix. So if you're using one of those like little metal, I don't know, kids containers or something like that, you might want to get a little plate that you can mix stuff on. Uh, you're going to want to get yourself a piece of paper, at least one, to do testing. And go ahead and start uh, playing with your brush while we're waiting. Looks great, Emma. You're in. We're in. These look great. Good job, you guys. You're killing it. 
So a lot of what we're gonna be practicing today is what are the colors and how do we mix them? Um, let's talk a little bit about value before we get into anything else. You guys can be practicing. I'm just gonna be drawing on this thing and showing you some things. Um, so value in painting is the lightness or darkness of any color. Uh, so if, let's see, so if one, is like a light, it's, you know, it's just blank paper. Five is like beautiful dark. Two, three, and four are varying levels of, right? We slowly get darker. They're varying shades of, of getting darker. So this is light, light, medium, 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 dark, and dark. Um, so usually, there's usually at least five values, often more, depending on how detailed you're going to get. I'm going to label them here. This is like a five, five. This is like a four. Obviously, this is a one and this is a one. So we don't paint ones. We leave them. But this is like two, right? And maybe three down here. This is five, this is one, this is four, this is three, this is five. Okay, here's where it's tricky. There's like five, there's four, and there's a two in here, which is why we're gonna do this part last. I'd say this is like a four, or let's put it this way. This is like a two here on the outside, the fringe. It's a five in between, and then it's a five around the edge. So we're going to start here. I'll take a picture of that fantastic sketch for you. This is probably just looking. It's a good thing I we have a picture of it, because I know it's just looking ridiculous. Um, here is your values chart. We're going to start by painting the fives. And we're going to layer those up. All right, so I'm going to need, here's my painting pad. Let's see here, I want to be able to see this. I want you to at least be able to see the testing here. This guy's over here. Uh -oh. Here's where I get into trouble. I don't really have the room for this. All right, you guys have this. No, there's a better way to do this. I know it. Here, hold on. Maybe like, no, like this. Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put my testing paper off to the side or maybe underneath. And this will go here so we can see our source. You can't see it. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm getting oh. there. Yeah. I need a bigger camera or something. <laughs> what about I, if it's zoomed out? I, I, it can't, I, you can't zoom it out on Zoom. Oh, okay which is, yeah, you can't do it. But anyway, let's see what we can do here. We'll get this here. Here's my testing paper. So you can see a little bit of everything here. Um, so when I'm going to start with my um, paintings, I'm going to start with my darks. I'm going to start with my big brush. Here, hold on, this one. And I'm going to, and, uh, and I'm going to have a dry, I like to call it my blankie. I'm gonna have my blankie here in my non painting hand because sometimes if you go to, if you lay a thing down and you go too dark, like let's say like this, you're like, oh, that's way too dark. If I grab it quick enough, I can sometimes at least blend it out and pull out a little bit. You have to move fast though, because watercolor moves fast. Way better to test on your paper before you lay anything down on your painting. So this is what testing is. All right, I'm gonna put my, I want you to be able to see how often I'm dipping here. So here is my little dipping station. <laughs> You're gonna be able to watch this. All right, so my first, uh, the first color that I'm gonna mix, when I look at this panda, he looks bluish a dark bluish. So I'm going to take ultra, but if I put blue down like this, this is not the color that that panda is. This panda is not blue. He's blue with some burnt umber, some, some burnt, some brown. So as usual, I'm returning to my favorite. I know I have my, everybody has their things. Every teacher has their ways. They like to mix things in burnt for me. Uh, one of my favorite darks 
is burnt umber and ultramarine blue. It just is gorgeous. It's this rich brown. So if you have burnt umber and and uh, which is a brown and, and ultramarine blue, notice I'm pulling ultramarine blue here. And then I'm grabbing some of my burnt umber from the top and I'm, I'm mixing them together. Now, if this looks too brown, I pull in more blue. And if this looks too blue, I pull in more brown. So I mix something here using a little bit, I'm getting some water on my brush, L using a little bit of water in my brush until I have this kind of watery mix. Now I'm gonna come down here and test it. Okay, that's pretty dark. So I might dip my brush in the water again because I know I wanna build my darks up, but I want them to be. So I like to start with the darkest areas because they're the least likely you're gonna screw up, right? They're the least likely you're gonna to go too dark. Except first, if you put them in the wrong place, I suppose. Except if you put them in the wrong place. That's why the drawing is so important, right? Like that's why identifying those darks is very important. Um, so I'm going to start with this ultramarine blue and I can keep adding to it. So I'm just continuing as I, you know, it gets a little waterier. So you can keep adding paint to this. So my, I'm mixing really a dark gray is what I'm mixing. I feel like... This is pretty good. I can see this looks uh, fairly, it's darkish, but it's not super dark. Yeah, see if I even lay it down here, I'm gonna go to the darkest areas. Now I'm talking about the bear, not the background. That's a different, that's gonna be a different mix. Um, oops, should have tested that first. Yeah, this is in pretty good shape. If I feel like this is too dark, see I can kind of pull it back a little bit. I am going to darken. I will get dark. And you'll see, look at what happens. As I lay this down, the watercolor even lightens as it dries. So I know if I can kind of come in here. And by the way, we're going to skip the eyes till the end. So no painting of the eyes, because there's a couple of things we're going to need to do that are tricky in terms of preserving the whites. And I want to make sure you guys are testing here. I'm testing almost every point of the way. I'm going to work around this green bamboo shoot, right? That's coming up over his ear, working around those. I might even want to make this edge a little raggedy. So see, I'm using the edge of mine because there's white, this white kind of comes in here, here too, a little bit raggedy. So I'm, um, there we go. Where else is there dark on this bear? Down here. And I'm going around the bamboo shoots. See that? I'm not painting them. The bamboo shoots are in front, they're blocking the bear, therefore we are gonna paint those separately. Even though this is like a four, I'm still gonna paint over it because I know that this paint is gonna dry light. So you can, when you're ready, you can either just watch and do this you know, later or when you're ready. And notice how often I'm having to go back and, um, here, go down test my paper. Oops, it's a little bit too brown. I want this to be up here too. It's a little bit. I'm using the kind of edge of my paper to kind of, uh, my brush to kind of create a little bit of a feeling, a soft edge, a feeling of fur. I'm really only interested in doing that where light meets dark. So don't do any of this all the way across. This is silly and it looks silly. This will be solid color. We're focusing on sort of edges. Look at how fast this all goes, see? The painting itself. Okay, this area of the bear is kind of light, so I'm coming in here. 
working around my bamboo leaves. I'll show you how to mix the background next before we get into any more detail on the face. I'll take a look in just a second. I'm gonna finish this fast and then I'm gonna let you guys catch up with me. Is that it? Okay, not really focusing on the face right now. Leave that alone. Look at how, look at how light this dries. So I'm gonna be able to go over this when this dries completely, I'm gonna be able to go over it with a darker version. Let me just show you a little bit here. See how I can darken it? Here. All right, now I'm gonna pull off my, I don't think it's as helpful to look at what I'm, probably easier to look at this up close. I just wanted you to see kind of my approach as I'm going through. So you look and see here, I can layer in the darks. Now, if I add paint while this is still wet, let's see, here's an area. It's going to bleed. It's going to run and it's going to bleed. You're not going to be able to control that as much. So you really want to wait until things dry to be able to layer your next. So one of the ways to control is to build up your darks slowly and to work with the darkest darks because we're, like, we're less likely to mess those up. So I'm gonna take a picture of this. You can even see it's fairly uneven. This, is, this painting is at what we would call the awkward stage. There we go. Although it's still kind of cute. I don't know, is anybody kind of entranced with their bear like I am? It's cute, <laughs> bear's cute. It's a very cute bear. The, out, the outside area, because I see a lot of green in here, we're going to mix a different kind of dark. We're going to mix um, green. So as you see, if I, I have this dark viridian green, this is definitely the green I prefer you use. If you don't have it, just use what you've got, but notice it'll do. Other greens have more yellow and turn out kind of brownish and more ugly. This is a fairly ugly brown isn't ugly. I mean, you know what I mean. It turns out uh, duller. Um, this is a very vibrant color. Here, I'm going to send it across. This is Viridian Green. So if you've got it, use it. If you don't, use what you got. That's Viridian Green. Um, so we know that the complement of Viridian, if I put this out here, it doesn't, like you can see, this is not the color that's happening. It's darker than this. So I to darken this, I need to mix a complement. I'm going to try two. I'm going to try one with burnt sand. See which one I like better. And I need a little bit more paint for this. Hold on. Yep. If you've got it, I'm going to try one with burnt sienna. So burnt sienna is like an orange or lighter, uh, one of my favorite colors in the palette because it's just so gorgeous. Um, it's kind of this orangey color right? Like there. Notice I'm going to a different little plate so I can mix. I'm going to mix green, viridian green, with this burnt sienna and see if it makes the dark that I want. Might not. I might need to take more drastic measures. Let's see. Uh, it's still pretty green. I think it needs to be darker. So I may add Alizar and Crimson into the mix, which is a very dark burgundy red. If you don't have that, you can mix kind of whatever red you've got. Any red, yeah, that's better. This is better. It's more kind of loamy. So Viridian Green, maybe Burnt Sienna, Alizar and Crimson. And then let me double check it here to make sure it's doing what I want to do. And then I can bring that in around the edge here. These should be fairly similar values, the this and this. So don't worry if it, your painting kind of disappears a little bit. This darky area is like, this sort of darkish area is, there's a little bit of a lost edge there.
I'm actually going a little bit darker than I normally would because I want to move us along. But also because I have already laid this down. So I have a sense of how dark things need to be, right? And look what happens is I lay down. And this look at this beautiful, rich, dark green color. This is why I'm using a big brush. Otherwise, this would take a long time. If I tried to do this with a little brush or a little pointed brush like this, right? Look at, I'd be going crazy. I'd be like, ah, this is taking forever. Be careful going around your edges. You don't chop things off. Let's see. I want to work around here without, huh, interesting. Down here is a little bit lighter green. This area is a little bit lighter green. So we'll save it for now. So you see they're both dark uh, kind of grayish colors, but this one has a blue, this is used mixed using blue and the complement, which is orange. And this is made uh, using green and the complement, which is red. So they make different kind of shades of green, distinguishing the background. Here, I'll take a picture of this. So now, sorry, catch up. I'll have you catch up. I will stop. Sometimes it's hard for me. I get excited and I can see the next step and I want to do it. So I'm sorry. I'm trying to slow down. Tell me to slow down. You can. You can tell me to slow my roll. If you're feeling a little breathless, like, <gasps> and you're also having trouble visualizing, Anik looks great. Great, 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 great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Sorry, Leah. Could you repeat the, the mix just for green, please? I'm going to write it put me down. Uh, green, uh, Viridian green and Alizar and crimson and a little bit of burnt sienna. Thank you. But primarily green and Alizar and crimson. That seems to make the nicest, richest, darkest green. So those are my two favorite darks. I love um, the burnt umber. So the one that we use for the, the bear is like that burnt umber, which is kind of this orangey color and ultramarine blue, right? That's one uh, dark mix that I use a lot. The other is this one, Bur uh, Viridian Green and Alizar and Crimson. They both make dark. Uh, if you mix them correctly, they make a kind of blackish dark. Uh, in this case, I wanted more green showing up. So I sort of emphasized the green more. Um, but you know, you're like, they are, these are beautiful dark mixes. Um, this one, the green and the Alizar and Crimson is a little cooler. The Burnt Umber and uh, Ultramarine Blue is a little bit warmer dark. They're looking great, you guys. Very good. Mm. Those who are ready can go on to mixing um, the sort of mid term. Oh, you know what? I forgot to label these, the values of these, these greens. These greens are like twos, maybe threes in some areas, but mostly, well, it's interesting because they look like a, maybe I'd say a three because compared to here, one, this is fairly dark compared to this, this is fairly light. So your challenge is to find something that really is the mid-tone between this dark and this light. So greens you'll mix starting with green and then to lighten it, yellow. Oh, I need more yellow, hold on. You try all your yellows, experiment with your yellows. I'm using a cadmium yellow pale right now. Um, but just experiment with ever. So I'm gonna start by lightening this green with yellow. And then I'm gonna add a touch of cadmium red, not too much. Brush needs to be wetter. Touch of cadmium red. Why am I putting cadmium red in here? 
Why am I doing that? Anybody remember? Because all greens have red. Yeah, all natural greens, right? All greens in nature have a little bit of red in them. Otherwise, they look too. So once you get a kind of green in here with yellow and a little bit of red in it, <clears throat> you can test down here. And my suggestion is to dip at least once in your water. So you'll notice that to lighten a color, all you need to do is dip in the water with the color on your brush. So that by the time, so that when I start laying down these, right, they're very light. Like this is fairly light. It looks dark against my white. And it means, I know there's darker parts of these leaves. You're gonna add those on later, but you want something really light. So at least dip your brush in at least once in the water to lighten your color. Go in and get those greens. We're doing this now because these are the midtones. We need to kind of get them, before we get into our face work, we wanna get these in because in some places they're blocking the face. So this is green. If you don't have viridian green or a green at all, you of course um, can use, uh, can mix blue and yellow. You can go ahead and do this. We're gonna leave this area blank right now. It's a lighter green than what's happening up here but uh, we wanna balance that with making it darker than this, but lighter than that. So we wanna balance this. We'll, we'll get that area last. And I know things are still looking kind of messy. Oh, you know, I kind of forgot to add in these little yellow shoots. Um, I don't think they're as important. You can try Which and get them Oh, there's like these little stems that the- Oh, uh, yes, are. I was wondering about that. Yeah, I just forgot about them. Here, let's oh. see if I can get them in. I might be able to add them in over what's happening here. Um, maybe a little bit here. So right now you can see they're kind of fading into my dark, which means I, I probably can't go light over it, but we're gonna try a couple of things towards the end. Don't worry about it though. I don't, I don't really think this painting is more important than the leaves themselves and the bear, the bear. I think that's kind of the major thing we're going for. I'm gonna show you a couple of things you might be able to do at the end that can perhaps, where we can perhaps add these white areas in, but, um, or light areas in, but I don't really, I don't think we need to just yet. So here we are. So notice we're laying in bases a lot like we did. These are less varied bases, a lot like we did in a painting. It's just that we're, um, it's just that we're building our darks up rather than going as dark as possible for the base. For those of you uh, who wanna play with acrylic and oil painting and or oil painting, I do a class on Sundays, 12 to three. Um, no, 11.30 to 2.30 East, uh, PST. So I don't know, 2.30 to 5.30 EST. Um, where you can practice uh, uh, doing going through watercolor paintings. Right now we're copying a Cezanne um, still life. Uh, we'll be going to our own still lives, all of that stuff. So if you wanna learn how that works or you wanna work on that, you wanna continue to practice that, that's going on. But so you'll notice these are kind of plain, right? What's happening here is kind of plain right now. Mm -hmm. We will add our details in later, but we start with kind of our lighter areas and then we move to darker. So go ahead and let's get here. Leah, we're gonna... hmm? I'm facing a unique problem with uh, watercolor and that is that I'm not getting the exact mix every time I'm mixing it. So You'll like, never, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, 
so like uh, i'm just like you know for the black like for the fi- uh, number 5 portion the darkest portion mm-hmm. i was trying because you know uh, i can't mix a lot of it i'm just trying to mix it again and again but it's just coming to a different shade which i never faced in acrylic so yeah i'm so you did happy. face it in acrylic you just didn't notice it that's just okay. normal okay. anyways do you want this to be all the same dark you don't you want there to be variations in your dark because there are variations in the dark here. So I guess my point would be don't stress too much about it. Just keep adding in. If you're seeing extreme variations, it should be obvious which direction. So if something is looking to, if you're mixing blue and brown and something is looking to blue, blue, pull more brown in. But don't try to get the same color. You'll make yourself crazy. That's not the object. But the object, also, I think, sorry, what? I read somewhere, but if you want the same color, you're supposed to mix a lot of it. Yeah, but you can mix a lot right. of it. You it can mix better. a lot of it, right? But in these these in these exercises, you don't need it. I want to get you out of that idea. That's a that makes your point painting boring. Everything's yeah, all the same it's value. The same it's green. boring. This this animal has life. So so I guess my point is don't worry about it. No, don't worry it about it. But painting flat. Yeah, Mexican. it'll make the painting flat. Uh, you'll just sprinkle little bits of it all over. But Rashmi, the same thing happened to you in acrylic and oil painting. You just didn't notice. It, it happened all the time. It happened, and not just to you. It happens. That's how it is. <laughs> that's like the that's like the actual technique. So don't worry about it. Just go forward. Um, but continue to adjust. Let's see. Oh, Eliza, that's looking nice. Kristen, looking good. Good job, rookies. Good job. Eliza, do you have, what green are you using? Are you using sap green? Um, I've used the deep green. Uh-huh. Ooh, uh, I, 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 which, first of all, which of them? Uh, sorry. Uh, the, one that's, the one that you've used for your bamboo leaves. For my bamboo leaf, so I have a deep green. Yeah. Uh, with uh, I think it was um, gamboge yellow. Oh, the gamboge is what's turning it to. You. Okay, so just yeah. know gamboge and, uh, is going to make your thing mustard colored. Oh, okay. So and you want to on the red. on the top layers, you're going to want to use a yellow. I know gamboge but is cad- a fantastic cadmium. color. Cadmium. I had cadmium. I don't know. I chose. The... Yeah, cadmium is right. So cadmium and green. Yeah. So your deep green and your cadmium, very good. If you want to get this sort of brighter, greener color, um, don't use mm-hmm. gamboge as your yellow, which is kind of more of a mustard. It's mustard. No, I can use, see. Uh, no. Which is a fantastic color. I mean, it does great things. It's just uh, use like a, if you have like a pale yellow or a cadmium yellow, something that's I, very yeah. bright yellow on the top should... layers, you're going to want to mix that. Okay. Yeah. But nice. Very nice. Good job. Let's see. I'm just looking at the colors and wanting to know what's happening. Not bad, Mina, not bad. Good, 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 good. The leaves okay. are which green? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Yeah. The leaves oh, are rich green and yellow. Okay. Uh, viridian green, viridian. yellow and uh, cadmium red. Like a like a pale cat. Like a like. Don't use uh, gamboge. Gamboge is like a ochre. It's kind of mu- mustardy. So you want a very bright yellow. Okay. Ah, looking good, guys. Anik, you're going to want to get a little bit um, more green into your top layers, too. Claudia, you're going to want a little uh, less green <laughs> your top layers. Good job, you guys. You're getting this is looking great. These are looking great. OK, so let's talk about um, the face. Let's talk about the face. Uh, there are the there is, of course, these. I think we should lay in the darkest parts of the face first. So I'm going to suggest that you move to the skinnier brush, a skinnier brush, um, and we're going to mix more ultramarine blue with burnt umber. You're going to mix more of that, right? over here. Um, 
we're going to do the eyes last because there's areas we really want to preserve. But uh, some dark areas that we can work right now are here. So you see I'm not everywhere. And you want to be careful not to let it drip because it's, there's light just beneath. There's dark here. All right, and then this is pretty dark. I'm just going right in because I know. All right, that's fairly dark right there and a little bit here. So there's dark parts of the nose. You're gonna wanna make sure you go kind of light on the nose because there's areas, although the nose is dark, there's areas that are darker and areas that are lighter. So you don't wanna go, you wanna go in with a watery dark on the nose on this layer. We're gonna build this up. And it's the same with the eyes. So we're gonna want a very light watery dark. See that? We want to go, we're going to build our darks up because there's light areas within the eye that sort of indicate where the eye is. So I want to go super, super light, oops, on this base. Okay. Light on the nose and light here. You can go a little bit darker down here. Um, so now we're going to go into, so we know with our twos, we're going to go back to our bigger brush. Just looking to see kind of what the colors are. Ah, so Gamboge might come in handy here. Let's, uh, we're going to try a couple of experimental mixtures. This is kind of a yellowy gray color down here. So uh, when you're trying to mix a shadow color of a particular color, uh, you will take the complement of that color and mix it in to create the shadow. So notice I'm cleaning out my palette again so I can do some clean mixes. So uh, what is the complement? There are three complementary color pairs. What is the complement for yellow? Violet. Purple, yeah, purple. Oh. Right, purple, violet, purple, yes, absolutely. So yellow and purple, we're gonna mix together to try and get a kind of gray, a light gray that will work here in this color. We're gonna start with that. And actually, while I was saying not to avoid the gamboge in these, um, gamboge might work really well. Uh, gamboge, yellow ochre, but if you don't have either of those colors, don't worry about it. Just use the yellows you've got. Um, if you have a purple, that's great. You can use it. Uh, I don't, so I'm gonna mix a purple. I'm gonna use permanent red or quinacridone red and ultramarine blue to mix a purple. All right? Make sure that your purple is balanced between blue and red. It's not too red or it's not too blue. You're gonna mix purple. And then I'm gonna clean my brush out and I'm gonna grab a little gamboge or yellow ochre and mix it in. And I should have a kind of a yellowy, yeah, it's a beautiful gray color actually. You get this kind of yellowy gray that's really, really pretty. Here, I'm trying to show you here, okay? It's this kind of beautiful. And if it looks too yellow, if it looks too purple, if it looks too red, add the other colors in. So there are three colors in here. There's, um, blue, ultramarine blue, there is uh, a permanent red or quinacridone red, a cool red. Um, and then there's a yellow, gamboge or whatever yellow you've got, right? So if it looks too much, if it doesn't look gray, if it looks too much like one of those colors, you're gonna, you'll, you'll adjust it with the others, with the other two colors. And then with a very, very like, so I'm gonna pick up, I've got a little bit of that color here. I'm gonna test it here, too dark. I'm gonna go in, dip in with my brush till I've got something that's so light, you can barely see it. And then I'm gonna lay that in here. So I want this to be lighter than that. Can, can you, sorry, can you repeat once again your combination for the, the cheeks? Yes, watch me first and then I will. I want you to watch the. 
And notice I'm getting a little bit of dripping down here. So I'm pulling that up with my blankie. And then this part is white. So this part here, I'm adding a little bit more yellow actually. Yep. Right. So I'm going very weak. I've got to be very careful because I don't want to go too dark. And I'm brushing this across. And you'll see there's areas down here where it's actually lighter. So I'm dipping my brush in again. See how light I'm going on this. I'm getting it in. I'm going to layer my darker color is, colors in on top later. I can also take a little bit of this here and come here. I'll get there, uh, Anya, just a second. And I'll tell you what the mix is. Notice right now, these colors are virtually the same. Uh, maybe this is like a three, this is like a two. Uh, we're, that's why we're gonna need to darken this later, but I wanted us to have these to kind of balance each other out. Uh, the mix is, um, is uh, ultramarine blue, alizarin and crimson, no, sorry, ultramarine blue, quinacridone red or permanent red, and uh, I'm using gamboge, which is yellow, which is like a yellow ochre. So you could use a yellow, yellow ochre, gamboge, and then a lot of water. Emma, you're a little bit dark on your leaves. So I want to I want to really uh, impress upon you, which I did, is to go lighter. You can't go so dark with watercolor on the base. I mean, it'll be okay because you've worked dark areas, but I want you to go lighter because if you go too dark, you cannot go back. So you need to uh, build up your darks. Okay, Rashmi looking pretty good. Just be aware of that in anything else that you do. So this is way light in some areas, maybe too light. And notice we're not just not touching this white areas that are super white. Good job. Anya, Anik, good, looks good, looks good. Good job, you guys. So yeah, the challenge of watercolor after working with acrylic is I've been going, go darker, go darker, go darker, go darker. And now I'm like, go lighter, go lighter, go lighter. Because <laughs> right? we have to build our, we're still gonna go dark, but we have to build our darks up in layers rather than uh, lay those darks out. So the leaves might be a little bit too dark on this one, but anyway, one learns. That's how you learn. Also, honestly, my my paints are so crappy that they don't actually mix each with each other. <laughs> like they just uh, use less water and make them thicker. You're using? Are you just using some kids' paint set? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so just uh, scoop out, just use, like, let it dry a little bit and then scoop out with your wet but not soaping. So less water is the key. But also, Emma, get yourself some paints because you're going to Oh, no, it. I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> this, is, this is temporary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, do just what you've got, right? But, like, really scoop it out. So I'm trying to think of how to describe this motion. It's like my brush is wet, but it's not dripping, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm scooping out with the dry. If you get your paint wet, you can pull out more. So you wanna use water, but not too much water. Okay. To scoop out like, so get it wet, let it dry a little bit till it's what they call semi-moist. And then you can kind of pull out more. Yeah, I really love tubed paint. And like I said, I'll show you why later, later in class. Um, but you guys are doing great. I think these are awesome. And by the way, uh, Team Toronto, you're doing all right. Um, cheeks. Hold on, let me look. Ooh, Sandra, nice textures. Very nice. Nina, too dark, honey. But I think too dark here. You went too dark here. Can you see that? Um, I mean, we'll do what we can. You're going to darken these and make this darker, but I want you to Pay attention to that. Pay attention to that darkness. That's that's what we're talking about. It's okay. 
this is what you learn in watercolor you just learn really quickly wow i went too dark i cannot go back on that one um nice let's see cheeks i'm looking rose ultramarine just use rose um ultramarine and a little bit of the yellow that's on the left rashmi yellow. the yellow ochre try those Try that, those three. Nice. So, uh, uh, so Nina, all is not lost, but I want you to pay attention. Lighter is lighter. You have to go lighter before you can go darker. We can fix this because a lot of your areas around here are really, I'm going to go back and darken this tremendously after I get these pieces in, but we do have to be careful. Hannah, uh, Needy, looking good. Uh, Needy, your your greens on your next layer need a little bit more red in them. Hannah, nice, nice, good layering, good layering, Hannah. You're close to a little bit too dark here, but you pulled it back. I see you did it. <laughs> you did it. You need to put a little bit of red in these greens. We want them a little bit less electric and more natural. It's hard to it's hard to feel that because this looks like such a vibrant green, but it isn't just green. You can't find the green of nature in a tube. It just you have to. Well, you can find it in several tubes, but you can't find it in one tube. You guys are doing great. Great. These are wonderful. This is such a hard thing to do. And this is your first watercolor painting. And I'm just so I'm so pleased. I love them. <laughs> Hannah, really good work on your on your lights in your shaded areas. I really love this concept of I think this concept of leaving the whites white is so fun to me because uh, the painting goes by a lot quicker. And you'll see that there's something about the texture of the paper, everything about watercolor that really pleases the eye. Um, with leaving these areas light. It's less, I, I guess I'm always in favor of like how efficiently and quickly can we paint something and watercolor is very efficient. It's the most efficient. It's also, you're probably noticing the most at terms of showing your stroke, your individual strokes. Like, so it's also a really good one for showing voice because you'll notice none of these look the same. And my goal is not to make you uh, look, make your painting look like mine. Eliza, excellent. Nina, great. Did you use a little water on there, Nina? <laughs> nice. Good job. Good save, Nina. Nina. <laughs> Nina, my cheek mixture has come out rather green. What do I need what? to add to? My Your cheek. cheek. What are you... So ultramarine, queen red, and new Cambodge. New Cambodge. Um, you'll need a little bit more red. Try a little bit more red. red. Okay. Right? Because that'll kind of push the green. Good job, Nina. So Nina took a little bit of water and dabbed off some of her, probably with a paper towel, some of her darks. Ooh, good, Emma. Good, 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 good. Yes, yes, yes. Um, nice work, you guys. Your Emma, your I think your leaves are a little dark, but I, I think it'll work in the context of this. Very nice, very subtle. And paper towel, yes. You, this is why we call this your blankie, right? <laughs> you can like, tap things off with it and... <laughs> All right, let's go back into... You guys are doing great. Let's go back into the face, into the eyes. So, and let's look really closely here. I'm gonna take a picture so you can see really closely. Oh, that's, uh, hold on here. You guys really are doing great. I want you to look at the eyes. So you're gonna see if we look really closely at this, there's this like light little rim right? And a slightly lighter rim here. And then it's darker in between and darker around. So what you want to do is preserve this light little rim 
and this little dark outside by darkening around the edges of it. That's why you want to use a skinny brush. I'm going to mix some blue, more blue and brown, right, to make my dark. I'm going to test my color. Oh, so dark. I'm going to add a little bit of light to it. I'm going to come in here and darken in between. So I want a lot of control. And so I'm going, right now I'm just kind of going around the dark areas. And is that really it? I think that's it. See, so I'm, and I can cut these in later. Right? But I really, I wanna preserve those. So here's the challenge, right? It's kind of going in and saving those lights. Right now it's a little bit too dramatic, but I'd rather, I can cut that in later. So actually in reality, I can get it in a little bit narrower. I just don't wanna lose it. And I can make this a little bit darker. And see how that works? Oh, and look at how that pops. Look at how all of us, it's amazing how the eyes just make something pop. Now, when you come to the edges of your white, you can let kind of pull your brush over a little bit. So where the, you're not painting every fur, you're not doing this, right? This is generally fairly solid. But when you come to the edge, you can use your brush to kind of brush out slightly uh, ragged edges. Cause that's like showing the darker fur interacting with the lighter fur in a few places. There's also a little bit of light in the tear duct here. Let's see, I can just go over and just keep getting darker. Oh, normally you see little white dots in the eyes. We don't really see that in this bear, which is kind there's of There's something very slightly, you can barely see them. But like it's very slight. So if you wanted to emphasize them, you could totally just leave them white. But I'm not so worried about that on this one. I'd, I'd rather like have us work. Yeah, and on the other side, yeah, it's happening here. So it's quite, notice it's quite so, Things look dark because of what they're next to you. That's why values in this understanding of values are so important. Mm -hmm. So I'm leaving this one here. I can thin it out later if it looks too strong. So see, this will help us with our um, light cheeky areas. We got a little darker with your cheekies than you'd like. Here's where you get to kind of amend that. Right, now we've got, and we'll do the same thing with the nostrils, so then the nose. So the nose has these really like, I'm kind of layering in my dark with my nose, but you'll see that if you look close here, let me take a picture of it so you can really see it up close at the nose. Can you see that there's kind of dark nostrils here on either side? And then it's kind of like a four or a four and a half so I'm layering this in like this. And it's slightly lighter up here, slightly lighter. So I can go in and do that. And then I can go back in and darken the nostrils kind of like here, like that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing how all of a sudden that starts to come out? This is our detail work. Notice that this eye, by the way, kind of curves around and comes right into the edge 
of the nose, the white nose. So it helps shape the white nose. I'm seeing that this is already drawing lighter. So I'm wanting to get more dark in here. See, little guy. Um, the last mix we should talk about before we start doing detail work, more detail work, is the tongue. The tongue is usually, I'm going to see, let me see. I think the tongue is going to be Quinn red or pink, new gamboge or yellow ochre, and a touch of ultramarine blue, just a touch. So you want it to be mostly pink, but slightly muted, slightly grayed. Mm, might be too. Here, I'm going to clean up my brush and give myself a clean. Sorry, let me write the tongue mixture again, please. Me. Yeah, it's like your basic kind of pinky skin mixture. It's um, uh, Quinn Red, New Gamboge mm -hmm. or Ochre. So you've got a kind of orangey color. I'm looking to see. And then a touch of ultramarine blue and then white, or sorry, water, a lot of water, not white, a lot of water. So you've got this kind of pinky. Yeah, I think that's right. So you can, you can add, you can have it be more pinky and it's kind of like pink here and darker pink here and darker pink down here. And then it's really like, you could, I'm getting a lot of water so that there's barely, it's pink. Yep, see, that's too dark. I want just a tiny bit of that color here in the center, but I want that to be, this to be much darker, this to be much darker. All right. I added it in and now I'm taking my blankie and pulling it out. So there's just this little tiny, so it's, it's kind of a medium here. And it's really, it's actually quite dark down here. So you could add more blue in down here. It's also a little bit that bluey part could come down in here too. It's kind of shaded underneath the nose. So now our job becomes darkening the areas that needed to be dark. So going back over, um, going back over with that original uh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue mix, right? For the dark of the bear. So I'm gonna go over, this needs to be much darker. So I need to go back over and I'm gonna add a little bit of furry texture there. Uh, I'm gonna go around where I kind of pulled out some light bamboo sticks to see if I can get those going. If I can't get them looking right, I'll just cover them up, but I might try. So now we're paying, and you can go in and do the same thing with your leaves. So there are dark areas of these leaves and lighter areas of these leaves. The mixes will be the same, red, green, and yellow. You'll just do, you'll just make them slightly darker in areas. So there's like a little dark line here and a little dark line of green here. This is fairly light. It's dark here. It's kind of lighter here. It's got a yellow tip. So you're, now your job is to go back and kind of add those darker colors. So see how I'm able to like, pull out these colors on the top, make this darker. Yeah, I think the other thing that's really cool, and then over here, down here, it's a little bit darker. So I can go in and kind of darken slightly. Once I get my dark of my fur correct, right? Once I get this area dark enough, I can kind of darken in places so now your job is to really look at this bear and see that like here, for example, if I'm looking at the picture, I can see that it's slightly darker here. 
Is that even too dark? Careful not to get too dark there. Dip my brush in water, test it. Yeah, it's like a little bit darker here. And if I'm getting water pooling, I can pull that out here. It's a little bit darker under here. So I can start to add that very, uh, it's easy to go too dark. Look at how, look, at I'm doing it too. So anybody who I said, hey, you went too dark, look what I'm doing. I'm totally doing it. Just saying. There are sort of variations in this dark. Same over here. It's like, it's like a slightly little bit darker here, lighter there. Right, really dark in your, the dark areas. You can see why starting with uh, the darks first helps. You're less likely to go too dark with those. If you wanna pick up some of this texture light here, notice I'm doing something called dry brush. So I'm letting my, I'm dragging some of the dark color over, but my brush is mostly dry. So that creates a little bit of a light dark texture. I'm not entirely covering it. Up here, there's this lovely little edge where dark meets light. So kind of up here, you want to dry, you want to sort of dry brush in a little bit. Up oh, too dark. There we go. Keep your blankie with you. <laughs> So you can dry brush just like in acrylic to kind of drag color over and make it a little bit more fur-like. But really where you're doing that is where areas are darker light. So now you can just, now I feel like you guys can just go. Working details, just, and for those of you who are new, don't pressure yourself to do any more than what you can see. So go to the areas where you see a shift in value. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. And do those. Don't worry about all the little ones. Every little one. If you've been doing this a while, it'll be easier to see. So that's true for everyone, right? Just go to the values that you see. This here is a darker green. This little area here is a darker green. I'm mixing it with green, yellow, and a touch of red. Uh, maybe a little bit more yellow. It's, it's darker than the bamboo around it, but it's lighter than this dark area on the top. Did you say we can go to dark at this stage too. Or? Yeah, yeah. Go dark now. You, now your job is to get the darks to their proper dark level of so darkness. So it's okay to go dark now. Yes, because you've got every, all your values laid out, right? Uh, you know what where you need to go dark, right, and where you need to go lighter. You can't really. It's easy to go if you don't have everything laid out. You don't have this idea of like kind of where where the darks are. And then you can go, you can also go dark, go darker with your, because um, the darks are really the beautiful thing. They're the things that showcase, right? Like you, like people are so obsessed with like light colors, but look at that. That's just stunning. The darks are where all the pigment is. So I'm now adding little bits of dark green into parts of my bamboo, but not all of it. I'm looking at the areas that are, now I'm looking pretty closely at the picture. So I would highly recommend you look at the picture. I can put it up, but it's probably better for you to look at it on. Oh, on uh, on your on WhatsApp, just because you'll be able to see the detail better than you can on here, right? 
notice these uh, bamboo have bamboos have beautiful light yellows and lights and darks in them. There's some nice variation in the bamboo. All right, you guys, I will be right back. Now we're starting to get somewhere. I'm gonna go, I'll be right back. I was gonna give you a quick glimpse of Hermes, but he jumped off my lap quickly. Mm. I'm sure he'll be back. <laughs> yeah, these are great studies, Olga, because they really teach you about light and dark, don't they? Yeah, that's true. It's that's like, like a really, so now you get to kind now pick one of them and go more deep, do deeply into the, I love the one of the little guys laying I was very close to doing the one of the little fat panda bears laying on the deck. It's so cute. <laughs> That's really cute, but um, so now go into one and see if you can add a little bit more variation and detail, right? Because that's where we get to do that. Oh, I'm looking up here. This is definitely a painting with a lot of work. Oh my God. Can you believe we've gone almost two hours? Yeah. Oh, does that feel like that? Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Who's it saying yes? Speak. Who's saying I yes? I saying yes. You're saying it feels like two hours? Yeah, and I didn't get anywhere really. Oh, because you're a little bit you're you're a little bit frustrated. I I probably that's not true though. Let me see. I can't believe this. This two hours just flew by for yeah, me. Yeah, they did. This is um, part of what happens with painting. Dad, no, oh, sorry, sorry. Part of what happens with painting is um, that you forget time. Time kind of, you forget how long things take or time doesn't, time plays differently. You should be feeling like it goes faster. It's a little bit. I really just worked on the dog and a little bit on the wall. Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, let me see. I'll get back to it. Yeah, if I can. 
Emma, he's coming along. He's really cute. You did a good job. Now just just keep on working the darks. Try and add some of your lights. Emma, you got to decide what's happening over here on this light side. You've got to do something with that. I'd say darken it. Yeah, you're you're working on the dog. You did great. That's how long it takes, Diana. I guess. That's just how long it takes. <laughs> Now, I wanted to show you a couple of things that I like about liquid watercolor. Sometimes you can get wet liquid. I'm trying to, here, let's see. Where's some yellow? Let's see if I can show you. Sometimes, so I'm getting some wet yellow here in my tube, along with some wet white be quickly before it dries. It'll, it'll dry really quickly and then this becomes moot. Oh wait, no, that's gamboge like gamboge, but it's troublesome. And a little bit of white. So normally we don't use white, right? Cause we don't paint white, but sometimes you can use white here and I, it needs to be wet. You can see I've got all these piles of white, which I find totally useless after they dry. But if your brush is wet and you can scoop up. So my brush is wet, but not dripping. I can sometimes take the tubed white paint and I can go in and add lights in on top. See how I'm doing that? See how I'm able to go in and lighten in some areas. I kind of lost this light edge, so I'm coming back in. So sometimes I can go back in and do that with my white. I can even go back in here and pull that white out if I need to, or I can maybe add a little bit of a spot right, that little reflected light spot, I can add it in on top. So sometimes with white, see how I did that? I can do that with the tubed paint. You can't really do it. I've never really had much luck in doing it. But then all you need is a tube of white. Yeah, you need a tube of white and it needs to be wet and you do need no water on Good. your brush. So you're loading up your brush. So here I'm gonna try with like, yellow and white. I'm mixing yellow and white together, but it's all goopy on the brush. I'm going to see if I can add in some lights. Oh yeah. See, uh, we'll see what happens though. They darken. So I can maybe add in some lights onto my darks. Let's see. This is a big experiment. I don't know if this will work. Uh, here is yellow. And it's really, it's dry. It's quite dry. Well, it's, it's wet because it's tubed wet, but it doesn't have any water added to it. If you add water to it, it just blends in and darkens. And see, so see, actually that looks pretty good. Here, there's a little one like this. So you can really see what he's chewing on. Now I'm getting kind of cocky. Let's see what else I can do. So sometimes the tubed paint will allow you to add these whites on. Ah, here he is. Hold on. I'm going to give you guys a little Hermes. Hermes, come here. Come here, boo-boo. Come here. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Come here. Come here. Nope. <laughs> nope. He's like, I will only do this when I'm bothering you. <laughs> like, I don't want to. He's caving lion, grooming himself. Oh, naughty little boy. Uh, did, so was he off down the street, Sandra? No, or he was in he... the neighbor's garden. But oh. when he gets on the fence, he was threatening to go into a place where there's a big dog who eats cats. Oh, shit. And, he, and then he's the parking lot in the street. And so, Leon, lion. Shitheads. Mm, They're such shitheads. And we love them. Yes. Yes. I'm liking how this is looking. I think this is looking pretty sweet. I'll probably stop here. Um, so you see how, how this works, how we leave, how the white feeds into, the white on painted paper really feeds into um, how we work with everything else. Like it really, oh, here we are. Hi. Come here. Come here. Come here, come on. 
He's been outside for the last two hours in his little catio. He's, so he's, he's very excited. Also, I noticed that like in his catio, he can look straight up into a cherry tree where squirrels like to sit and eat eat the leaves and things. And so he, right. it's like oh. squirrel TV. He can look right up there and see all these squirrels like eating things. And Oh, Anik, that's looking great. Emma, nice. Aren't you, isn't this please? So um, Anik, if you want to go darker over the top here, get some more deep, deep, deep rich greens in there. I will try. <laughs> yes, try. It's gorgeous. Um, and here's mine, where mine is right now. Good job, you guys. Rashmi, nice. Okay, so yeah, I'm just trying to see. There's a little bit of issues with shape here, Rashmi. I think that's partly what happened. So notice... Your, um, I want to show you, You're, you have his body up a little too high. So he looks a little bit oblong, right? Yeah. So you might take, like you have this going on. Mm -hmm. So you might take your dark and get really, and really trim out. And I think his jaw is coming out a little too far, the white. So the, the, the helpful thing is you can actually bring in your dark a little bit and trim out this area here okay. using your dark okay. yeah yeah how's it feel it's totally different isn't it <laughs> so different it's such a different experience um yeah so take your darks rashmi and kind of carve your face in a little bit so he's a little bit narrower here is okay but down here get rid of that little white bit jutting out here his tongue you got the color perfect Eyes look good. Nice. Wow, Kristen. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> Are you totally pleased with yourself? You should be pleased with yourself. You guys should be. Rashmi, you should be pleased with yourself. Kristen, pleased with yourself. These are great. I mean, if you're feeling like, oh my God, there's so much more I have to do, or I have to get so much better. That's actually a good feeling, right? Because all of a sudden you've upped your game. Art is the only thing where like, it's one of the few things where you can get better so quickly in two hours of practice that all of a sudden your, your whole priority, your whole ballpark is... Um, your whole, uh, what do you call it? Your your expectation level has been raised. You can raise your expectation level several layers just doing that. Great work. Keep sending, let's go another five, five minutes or so. Um, this class will be, is recorded. So, and in fact, I'll, I'll just stop it right now because I don't think we need any 